Hi there. When we're studying human resource management, we need to understand a concept called delegation. So let's just spend a couple of minutes looking at what delegation is all about and what the upsides, the benefits and the potential downsides or drawbacks are of delegation. First of all, what is it? Well, it's all about giving other people stuff to do or more formally assigning or giving other people the authority to do things like uh, undertake particular tasks, complete a particular function or even take decisions. So delegation can happen at different levels within a business and in different functions. Let's just take a couple of examples. Let's imagine that we have a, a public limited company, uh, let's say I don't know, a Tesco, a public company, a supermarket group. The board of directors will have a human resources director responsible for the overall management of human resources in the business. And clearly she or he isn't going to have time to do all the recruitment and training, both for head office as well as for the store network. So quite rightly, the HR director will delegate authority for the recruitment and training activities of the business to a recruitment and training manager or even a recruitment and training director. In other words, the HR director doesn't need to worry that recruitment and training is being done properly. Or bit, she'd probably set some fairly firm objectives and aims for that activity. And moving further down the hierarchy, let's consider an individual supermarket or store. Most of them have a store manager. Now, the store manager, if he or she wanted to, could look around the store every day and try to move products around and check that everything was fine in the fruit and veg department as well as the frozen food. But much better will be to delegate authority for product display, customer service and other functions and tasks to the section managers who are likely to be specialists, more experienced, better placed to take decisions and handle the tasks. So you can see how delegation, if it is effective, and that's a big if, can lead to a win-win situation, both for the person who delegates the authority as well as the people involved in tasks being delegated to them. On the screen there, a few examples of the potential benefits when delegation is effective. Uh, and generally, it's all about trying to match the task and the function and the decision making to the right person, as well as being a particularly good method of motivating and empowering people who are given extra responsibility and also encouraging them to develop their skills, a great method of on the job training. Perhaps even more importantly, effective delegation allows senior managers to focus on the key tasks, strategic management rather than perhaps getting involved in too much of the day-to-day -day detail of managing a business. And overall, if delegation is effective and applied consistently, it should, use, should lead to better decision-making in a business and more efficient use of resources. However, of course, as with all HR tasks and issues, it doesn't always work out like that. In many cases, delegation can lead to some stresses, some problems. One of which, of course, is that if too much is delegated to those who take on the tasks, their workload increases and potentially their stress and therefore their performance may suffer. And of course, in smaller businesses, delegation can be particularly difficult because obviously there are fewer people able to take on the delegated tasks. And I think the other point is that you have to be careful what you delegate. It is not about delegating overall responsibility for decision making to enable other people further down the hierarchy to take the blame if things go wrong. So whenever you delegate, you have to be pretty sure about the quality, the experience and the reliability of the subordinates or the people to whom you are delegating. So there we go. That's just an overview of what we mean by the concept of delegation and some, uh, some of the benefits and the drawbacks.